So I'm Rachel Weaver. I'm with the Pedal Project. Uh, a couple of us pedal friends are here tonight. Uh, so we have a community tree zine uh, that we have done the last couple of years, and it is inspired from an original zine I made um, that was inspired by Clear Creek uh, Natural Heritage Center and um, going out there and looking at the ways trees hold each other. So um, I was going to do... Um, well, Pedal Project is we do environmental education around town. Just find us at our table with the zines and we'll tell you more about it. Um, I was going to read a couple things because I had 15 minutes. Um, it won't be that long. <laughs> um, but I thought I would read from our first one. Uh, so this we did in 2022. Um, and this is from an, an artist uh, in the area, Sarah Ruth Alexander. This is uh, their submission. Uh, and the, it's mixed multimedia, so there are paintings and photographs and essays and poems and a lot of really great stuff in these scenes. This is one of my favorite trees. I work at an aquatic plant farm and this tree is located on the neighboring horse ranch. I mentioned this being my favorite tree to my boss one day and he told me there's a horse buried underneath. I take lots of photos of this tree, but this one is extra stark, taken during the fall when the tree is dormant. After my dad died, a lot of the big old trees out on the farm where he and I both grew up also died. I do not think it any coincidence. The trees just lived. We appreciated them, but they received no real maintenance, nor was any really ever needed. This is where my dad lived, and he was greatly missed, not just by me, but I believe also by the trees out there. That's Sarah Ruth Alexander. And here's a couple of readings from the uh, number two, the new zine. Uh, so we put this out uh, just like a month ago at Denton Zine Fest. So uh, it's fresh off the press still. Um, any zines uh, purchased, we are con uh, donating 50%, half of the donation back to Save Northeast Denton. Mm. Yay. Okay, let me see, I have a couple in here. Okay, this is from B. Brown. The seeds we hold sacred. She who caught water. She who tethered the earth. Without her, even the sunlight changes. When a man and his saw sever a tree from her roots, whole worlds are lost. The delicate nests carefully arranged by families of birds. The ripe bursting fruits that squirrels feast upon. The nooks and crannies of her trunk that steadily marching ants call home. And though the world turns, and though the seasons change, and though a lucky grove of survivors may try together to fill her void as life thrives amid the sweet rot, as saplings yearn towards the gaping sun and all those left behind, hold her memory in the stories they tell about the weather. Even so, the birds know the cost, and the squirrels and the ants, and the girl who sat in her branches, resentful witness to the change called resilience and its slow, unsteady march against all that cannot be undone. It's B. Brown. Ooh. This piece is uh, from a local artist as well, Nova. This is called Simple Druidry. Go to talk to the trees. Here, do it right here. Speak out loud to them, they will hear. And they will talk to other trees and other trees spread what's been said quite rapidly. So open your heart to them. The trees will carry your words, and the answers will happen, sometimes randomly and not seen, sometimes fatefully, charmed and sensed. Go ahead, go on, talk to the trees. That was Nova. Woo. Um, this was an artist's statement to their piece. So their piece is... Really beautiful painting. And this is from Sabrina Guzman Skotnitsky, The Beauty of Trees in the Winter. As someone who thinks a lot about the climate crisis and environmental degradation and loss, I used to get very triggered at the sight of dead trees, especially those killed by wildfires here in BC. Even trees in the winter in their natural seasonal state where they are bare of leaves would remind me of skeletons and make me think of death. In my journey exploring how art might help myself and others process feelings of climate anxiety and ecological grief, I've recently become enamored with the beauty of trees in the winter and drawn to painting them. 
Since moving to Vancouver Island this past fall to be a graduate student at the University of Victoria, I've been learning about the unique features of the environment here, including the unique Gary Oak ecosystem. Gary Oak trees are very unique looking, especially in the winter when you can more clearly see their gnarled, odd-shaped branches which stretch in every which direction, making them especially intriguing to look at. Gary Oak ecosystems have been cultivated and cared for by, um, they have like the correct script of the indigenous peoples, and I, I will not be able to pronounce it, so get the zine and check that out, um, of the indigenous peoples here for thousands of years, who use prescriptive burning to help Gary Oaks flourish and make space for other species in the underbrush. Due to colonialism, agriculture and urban development, and ongoing fire suppression, Gary Oak woodlands have declined dramatically on Vancouver Island. Learning about this from indigenous knowledge holders and ecologists has caused me to reconsider what I thought I knew about the relationship between trees and fire, including how sometimes this combination can result in more life, rather than more death. While past paintings I've created of trees have largely reflected themes of ecological grief, this painting to me is hopeful because now there are concerted efforts to restore the Gary Oak ecosystem and to recenter indigenous traditional ecological knowledge. Every evening when I walk home, I admire the beautiful shapes of these trees outlined by the setting sun and feel thank thankful for their sacred geometry. Sabrina Guzman Skotnitsky. Woo! So really good stuff in here, y'all. Um, one last one. Um, this was um, a submission from me. Um, kind of a practice when you're out hiking or exploring nature or just um, next to a tree uh, and especially as the fall is happening and leaves are falling so notice a leaf what is its shape its venation and the pattern of its margin how does the season affect the leaf how does it move in the wind how does it fall from the tree what community of insects animals and microbes live with the leaf what does the leaf tell us about the tree? Notice what you already know. Observe and measure new information. Research and understand. Thank you, and I hope we all have a safe